Are you tired of feeling frustrated and overwhelmed about what's going on with your career? Maybe things are okay with your job, but you find yourself wanting more, but aren't sure what more is. Building your mid-career GPS is your guide to whatever is next. And I'm going to share a conversation with you I had with a career strategist and consultant who helps people when they're sick of it all. Today, you will meet Trisha Sitamiri. Trisha and I talk about how to take action when you're sick of where your career is going, and she shares her best tips to help you bounce back after a layoff and what challenges job seekers face in 2023. Let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome back. This is episode 156 of the Mid-Career GPS Podcast. I'm your host, John Narrell, and I help mid-career professionals who feel stuck, undervalued, and underutilized show up to find a job they love or love the job they have using my proven four-step formula. At the beginning of the month, a new episode of the Mid-Career GPS Podcast Plus drops. This is the premium version of my podcast where I expand on particular topics and offer additional education and training for my listeners. This month's topic is about leadership hits and misses, and I share 10 leadership traits or behaviors that are either building connections or breaking them down when it comes to your team members, direct reports, and your clients. You can subscribe to the Mid-Career GPS Podcast Plus by checking the show notes or visiting my website, johnnarrell.com, and clicking on the podcast tab. You can subscribe for as little as $3 a month, and I'd love to have you come over and listen to this premium version of the podcast. Plus, you'll get access to all of the previous premium episodes when you subscribe. Now, before we get into today's episode, I want to offer a friendly disclaimer. When discussing Trisha's book, we share a word that some people might find offensive or not suitable for younger listeners, so listener discretion is advised. But it was Trisha's book that piqued my interest in having her on the show. Trisha's book, I'm Sick of This Shit, reflects the frustration many of us feel or have felt at some point in our careers when we aren't getting the results we desire. Trisha's company, Control-Alt-Delete, helps people reset and reboot their career paths to help them increase their job satisfaction and have fulfilling careers. In addition to being a published author and international speaker, Trisha holds a degree in advertising and a master's degree in communication management. Trisha brings it during our conversation And it's my pleasure to introduce you to Trisha Sitamiri. My name is Trisha Sitamiri. I am a career coach, career strategist with Control-Alt-Delete. We support mid-career professionals that are looking to take control of their professional development journeys, um, take control of your future, alter your mindset, and and delete all doubt is actually what Control-Alt-Delete stands for. It is a a personal mantra of mine, and it's kind of like the, the North Star that I use when coaching my client. So I'm excited. We're going to get into all of that today. But Trisha, one of the things I'd like to know from you that you can share with everybody is what would you say has been your mid-career moment that has dramatically shaped or shifted the course of your career? Ooh, that is a good question. And I think I've had a couple of moments that, you know, really stand out to me. And I don't know that I would say that they were necessarily specific moments, but specific people that provided feedback, who provided, you know, kind of that guidance and mentorship for me that kind of opened up my thought process to what do I want out of my career? What should my next steps be? What kinds of things am I thinking about? And I had two um, folks that stand out. One of them was my manager. Her name is Kelly. She was 
fantastic. And she would challenge me whenever I would come to her with my bright ideas and, and excitement and all of those things. And I just really always appreciated, you know, her challenging me and kind of pushing me to to be my whole energetic, <laughs> excited self. Um, and then I also had a mentor of mine that just would always provide me really great perspective. And her name is Melissa. She um, had been with this organization for a really long time. She knew a lot of, you know, those intricacies, those, you know, longstanding relationships within the organization. And she always, you know, would provide me with different types of insight, clarity. I would come to her if I wanted to talk through different situations. And both of them played a huge part in supporting me when I was having the internal conversations around do I want to stay in this organization and try to find ways to grow my career here? Or is it time for me to start exploring opportunities outside of the organization, which for me was a really big deal because I loved the organization I was with and I was thinking I was going to be there for a really, really long time. And both of those folks really, you know, they spent time with me. They encouraged me. They challenged my thinking in terms of, okay, what are the next steps for me going to be? What can I do to make sure that I feel confident that I'm making the right decision? And how can I set myself up to thrive once I've made that decision and that happened to be going to another organization? You describe such a quintessential experience for a lot of people who listen to this podcast, which is they just don't want to feel stuck, right? Yeah. They're organizationally loyal, but at the same time, they know they are 100% responsible for their careers. They know they need to figure out whatever is next. And they're also looking for something more. And one of the reasons why I specifically wanted to talk to you today was you've got a book and a phenomenal title to your book, by the way, called I'm Sick of This Shit. Yeah. And, and I want to just dig in a little bit. So first and foremost, what made you come up with the title of the book? Yeah. So, you know, I was working with a lot of early talent professionals at the time I started thinking about putting something together. And I was noticing, you know, that a lot of them didn't feel necessarily confident in the types of career decisions that they were making. They were just kind of meandering about kind of going with the flow. Um, around the same time, I was also having conversations with my girlfriends, which at the time were mid-career. They had been in a space for a while. Um, they were starting to feel stuck, but not really sure of the steps of you know, how to transition, what that would look like, because now you're mid-career, you have responsibilities. It's not you know necessarily just a one-man, one-woman show. You have all of these other things to consider. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed with both of the groups is, you know, if they were a little bit more hesitant to make a decision or to pull the trigger, really put those actions in action that they wouldn't. And so until they got to the point where they were just like, I am sick of this shit, then they weren't going to act. And so, you know, that's really what the book is about. It's about having those internal conversations and just the way of thinking about what it is that you want, what it is that you value, how you want to move the needle for yourself towards fulfillment. Um, and so that's the title that I, I landed on. And I, I think that it's true. You know, if you're mildly uncomfortable or you're just a little bit agitated, you you might be more open to just saying, OK, this is what it looks like, the world of work. People are automatically frustrated with work. Uh, but when you get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm sick of this shit, it's like, OK, <laughs> let's, let's get it going. Let's go. <laughs> let's move it along. Absolutely. And one of the things I like about that, though, is it it really hits the pain point of where I like to think of it as, you know, where we just break where we've just had enough and we know that we need to do something different. It might be having a conversation with our supervisor. It might be having a conversation at home and figuring out, is it worth kind of making the career switch and things like that? What advice or guidance would you give us today for somebody who is kind of on the fence where they want to be grateful that they quote unquote, have it good where they're at, 
But at the same time, they sense that they're lacking something and they want something more. What advice would you give them to help them navigate that part of their career transition? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really great question. Um, so I, I think there is a lot of benefit to taking some time and doing career exploration um, and kind of that, you know, self-assessment to answer some of those questions. Why do I feel like this? Um, you know, trying to pinpoint maybe where this feeling is coming from. Is it with the actual type of work that I'm doing? Is it the environment? Is it that I don't feel supported? Um, and so, you know, just taking a little bit of time, not making a shotgun decision, you know, to blow up the opportunity that you have, because there could be ways that you can, you know, stem from that and, you know, get moving into a space where you are feeling some of those great things about your role and you're happy about, you know, how you're spending your time, how you're spending your talent. Um, but definitely, you know, just taking a beat and doing some career exploration, having those conversations with yourself. I always recommend journaling to my clients. Journaling is something that I do, writing down, you know, ideas, even though in the moment they may seem kind of crazy or far out there, you know, dream it up big and then say, okay, this is this is what I would like to see for myself. These are some of the things that I would want out of my career. And then you can kind of work backwards and put a roadmap together for yourself. Um, and you can do that, you know, by yourself. You can do that maybe with a close friend that is familiar, you know, with some of the things that are important to you to kind of give you some perspective. Um, or you can also work with coaches. Coaches are a really great way to get some of that external um, insight, a different viewpoint of, you know, what your situation is to kind of help you plant the seed to help you move along. I like that. That's that's very helpful. And I remember a time when I was sick of the shit I was dealing with at work. And uh, I live outside of Washington, D.C. I was working in D.C. at the time, and I had left work because I was on my way to go see my therapist. Okay. And I had to pass by the Pentagon. And if you know anything about D.C., um, security is pretty tight. So doing 55 in a 40 mile an hour zone around the Pentagon is not advisable. And so when the motorcycle <laughs> cop pulled me over and he comes up and he says to me, do you have any idea how fast you were going? And I said, no. And he says to me, would you like to explain yourself? I said, look, I, in all honesty, officer, I said, I could give you a whole bunch of cliche about why I don't like my job right now when what's going on. And admittedly, you probably don't want to hear it. So <laughs> I'm on my way to my therapist. Can we leave it at that? And he started laughing and he goes, all right. So, so then just, I'll just do a quick aside here with us. So I had to go to court because so I was given a ticket for distracted driving and I had okay. to go to court and I'm standing. So I, I see the officer and I acknowledge him and everything. And the, the, there was a judge and she looks at me and she says, Mr. Narrow, I want to be perfectly clear with you. You do not have to say a word today. Do you understand me? And I just looked at her and she said, Mr. Narrow, I'm going to need a verbal response. I said, in all, uh, in all respect, Your Honor, you told me I didn't have to say a word. And the officer <laughs> leans over and he goes, nice. <laughs> so we have those moments where we just get tired of dealing with everything. And so we all have our own journeys, and I'm curious to dig in a little bit more about the work that you do specifically with your clients, but what do you find is the tipping point either through your coaching work or through different circumstances they're dealing with that actually gets them to take action on their career path rather than choosing to just stay and wallowing where they are? Yeah, Burnout. <laughs> mm -hmm. Burnout uh, is the number one thing that I see that it boils down to. And I've seen this actually in two different ways. One, you're just mentally done, mentally drained. You have no more to give. And it starts seeping into other areas of your work. Um, the other way that I've seen it is burnout physically, you know. It, um, 
I can't remember exactly how the phrase goes, but if it's like, if you don't sit down and take care of yourself, your, your body will sit you down for you. And I have seen that happen. It shows up in stress. It shows up in high blood pressure. And like, that's obviously super, super, super scary. And so, you know, when people start realizing some of these things and seeing that they are really burnt out, they're, you know, short tempered, snapping at people unnecessarily, or even in spaces where they traditionally would not, it's like, I, I got to get out of here. Like, I can't do this anymore. And I will get clients like that. And I always let them know, you know, making a change, especially, you know, some type of significant uh, professional transition sometimes takes time. And I have to continually remind them of this as we're working together, because a lot of them will say, Trisha, I need a job two weeks ago. And I'm like, yep. oh, OK, so. I start asking questions. Where are we going? What does the resume look like? What, you know, things do you need to feel happy and whole in your next opportunity? Or what are you not getting from the, you know, position that you're in currently? Let's start there with some kind of baseline assessment and then put together a plan to, you know, move you towards action. But yes, definitely burnout. Yeah. And and we know we know burnout is real. And so for anybody who's listening, I'm going to reference in the show notes, but you can go back to episode 127, where I talked with Kate Donovan, who is a burnout expert, and she works with organizations and individuals around dealing with burnout. And it it just reinforces so much, Tricia, about what you've shared and the stress that people are under right now. And so as the, we're recording this in quarter two of 2023, and we know employment job numbers are interesting to say the least, and certainly we're seeing layoffs that are happening, particularly in the tech industry and such. But for people who essentially are forced to make a career change or a job change because they have been unfortunately laid off. Yeah. You've got some great tips to help people bounce back after a layoff. And I'm yeah. wondering if you can share them with us right now. Yes. Oh my goodness. So first of all, my heart goes out to anyone that has experienced a layoff. It is not a great space to be in. And I know that it comes with a whirlwind of emotion. So I, I will say that. Um, the first thing that I always recommend is to just take a deep breath, give it a little bit of time. And I know, you know, if you get that news that you've been laid off, you want to immediately go to the races and start painting the town with resumes. You know, a, a forced transition in a career is a really good time for you to say, okay, this is the kind of, you know, position or environment that I was previously in. Let me think about what the next chapter in my book looks like. Do I want to go into something similar? Um, you know, is there any specific kind of training that I would need to explore during this time? Um, and just really be thoughtful about where you want to go next, right? Um, another thing that I would recommend is after you take that breath, apply for unemployment if you qualify for it. Um, you know, sometimes with and um, with layoffs, people will get severance packages, which is really, really great. And if you don't, you know, looking to see if you're eligible for unemployment is going to give you at least a little bit of breathing room while you're wrapping your head around where am I going next? What does that look like? How do I want to talk about transferable skills if you fall into that space where you're wanting to transition? Unemployment and also seeing what kind of support or services are op, um, offered by, you know, workforce development in your area. That's going to be something that I would also recommend. And then tapping into your network. I am a, a LinkedIn lady. I've spent a lot of time on LinkedIn. I have, you know, gotten a lot of phenomenal opportunities just by being on LinkedIn, you know, um, and being able to tap into your network, brushing up your LinkedIn profile um, and connecting with different people, reaching out, letting people know what it is that you're looking for is also going to be something that's going to be key and super helpful. And that's why that, that period of time, thinking about where it is that you want to go is important because 
if you're going to go to, you know, networking events, if you're going to reach out and tap into your network, you want to be clear on what it is that, that you're asking for, right? And sometimes you just have that one shot to connect with someone. You want to be able to be crisp and articulate where it is that you would like to go, as well as what it is that you bring to the table. So even if it ends up being a situation where you're planting a seed today, they have it in the back of their head, like, oh, okay, this is what John is interested in. This is what John is great at. They may, you know, hear from a friend of a friend, you know, that's how LinkedIn kind of works and be able to, you know, make that connection. So, I mean, I have lots of other tips, but I would say that those are going to be my my three top things to um, to kind of get you moving to the next step. Take that deep breath. Give yourself grace. You know, it's not a personal thing. You are you are not the layoff. The layoff is just a situation that you happen to find yourself in. So that that's also very important to keep in mind. Those are extremely helpful. And and certainly we know how stressful a layoff can be for yes. people. And there's a lot of people right now that are going through it. But when I think about the current job market, and I think about all of those people who are looking to change jobs, change companies, change industries, and then they're also competing with people who have been laid off, who maybe weren't planning to look for a job, what would you say, Tricia, are the biggest challenges job seekers are currently facing or can expect in 2023? Yeah, you know, if you asked me that maybe two months ago, I would say, you know, it looked like there wasn't a lot of hiring going on, you know, after the first of the year. Sometimes folks are, you know, a little bit slower to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, But we're seeing upticks of that, you know, towards the end of March through April. So hiring is happening. I, I want to stress that because the thought is that, you know, because there have been so many layoffs, that there are not jobs out there. And that is not the case. There are opportunities out there. Um, what I would say is, you know, also to keep an open mind. You know, we we talked about the layoffs specifically being in the or primarily being in the tech space. And, you know, wild tech is a great opportunity. I've worked in tech. There are a lot of phenomenal well-paying, great opportunities in other industries that are going to still give you, you know, that opportunity for mentorships, support, long-term professional development, interest in the work. Um, So, you know, kind of having that open mind in terms of where you're looking for roles is also going to be, you know, a bit of advice that I would share. And, you know, if you're speaking through your resume and you don't feel like your resume is confidently conveying what it is that you bring to the table, do not be bashful about asking and accepting help. You know, we're both in the coaching space. So, you know, we, we coach and, you know, that's our, our livelihood. Um, So that's obviously one of the options for you, but, you know, I put out a lot of free content around different things that you can do to support yourself. Um, There's lots of information that is out there to help you, like if you're not in a position to maybe pay for coaching or maybe pay for training on the front end. Um, And so don't don't feel bad about, you know, seeking out and asking questions to support yourself because it's just going to help you in the long run. Great advice. And. I have to ask you this question, too, because I'm always interested in this when I when I meet, especially with other coaches. What's been the best networking tip you've ever given or received that you could share with our listeners today? Hmm, The best networking tip, I would say to just show up, you know, show up and follow up, you know, networking, just like any other relationship takes some tending, it takes some time, it takes some attention. And, you know, when you're going to networking events or, you know, even networking and finding folks to connect with, like on LinkedIn, a lot of people think it's just a high and by one and done. We're connected on LinkedIn. Why haven't the jobs shown up kind of situation? And it, it's not that, you know, it, sometimes you have to 
follow up. Sometimes you have to, you know, show exactly where and why it is that you're interested. Maybe, you know, something that the company is doing that's, you know, been in the news or, you know, just more than just hi or, hey, I'm going to send this blind LinkedIn request. You know, I think about my own personal LinkedIn. I get so many LinkedIn invitations and messages all the time. And the ones that I am most likely to respond to first, and I would say this was even the same when I was in the recruiting space, is someone that seems like they know what the heck they're talking about. Who am I? And, you know, they've taken a little bit of time to be thoughtful and intentional about how they're showing up. And then a second to that would be to follow up. You know, we all get busy with the thousand things that are on to-do list. I'm looking at a to-do list on my desk right now. And is it where it needs to be? Maybe not right now, but (laughs) we still have some time before the end of the day. Follow up. If If you've reached out to someone or you had an interesting conversation with somebody that you met and you haven't heard back from them, shoot them a note. Hey, I'm just following up on the last conversation. And a lot of the time it's, it's an oversight. Oh my goodness. I I just, I, the day got away from me. The week got away from me. I had a sick kid. I had to do this. I'm so glad that you responded. And then you can kind of pick things up from there. So show up and follow up. And being personal, like you said, personable yeah. rather, like you said, is such a difference. If I get yeah. one more automated message oh. on LinkedIn, <laughs> oh, <laughs> drives me nuts. Um, Make me think about like having to do a pet peeves episode and just kind of going on a rant. Have me back for that. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll put a pin in that one. Yes. Um, Tricia, we've had such a great time today, but we do need to start wrapping up. So what advice would you give for the listeners today to help them build their mid-career GPS? Yes. Go in intentional and with a plan. So, you know, I mentioned having a a roadmap and I center on action. Yes, it's great to be, you know, well-researched and it's good to take in information. But if you have all that information and you're not actually taking action, you are going to end up in the same space. So if you know that you're, you know, wanting to start on the move or you're wanting to make a transition, get the information, give it some thought, do that self-assessment, go through that bit of time uh, around career exploration, and then map it out for yourself so that you know, okay, this is what I want to work towards in three months, in six months, in nine months, and just come at it from some type of strategic plan. And you can do that on your own. Or like I said, working with the coach is going to, you know, help you maybe see things that or maybe a blind spot for you or see things that you're really good at that could be part of your, you know, career toolkit. That's what I call it. um, That you hadn't even known was there or you hadn't been using that you can now bring to the forefront to help you continue to make those strides and to move forward. So get the information and put a plan in action. Actions are so key. (laughs) Absolutely. With, without a doubt. <laughs> Trisha, if people want to connect with you further, they want to learn more about Control All to Lead or where to follow and connect with you. I'm going to turn the mic over to you and please share with us how people can connect. Absolutely. I'm a pretty easy lady to find. You can find me on my website, trishasitamire.com. That connects to all things Control Alt Delete. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, so you can find me at my name, Trisha Sitamire. I'm on Instagram under the same name. Um, also on YouTube, where I have a lot of different content about keeping going on your professional development journey. On my website, there's, you know, a whole resources page that has book recommendations. It has free self-assessments that you can use um, as you're putting together a roadmap for yourself. There's lots of information um, that is absolutely free of charge. And then you can also shoot me a note if there's anything that I can support you with. There's all of all the things are on my website. Um, So I look forward to, you know, connecting with you all. And I'm just excited to to be on the show and talking about how to move forward in your career. 
you've done that. And I thank you so much. I'm glad we were able to get connected and I look forward to staying connected. Trisha, Trisha Sitamari, thank you so much for spending some time with us today on the Mid-Career GPS welcome. podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, my friends, Trisha dropped a lot of great information today, but here's my takeaway for you. With whatever you're dealing with in your job right now, whether you think it's stressful or you feel a little complacent or you're stuck or to coin the phrase from her book at the title of her book, if you're just sick of the shit that you're dealing with, it may be time for you to take some action. And the action that you choose to take is yours and yours alone. So think about who you need to pull in, be it a close friend, a loved one, or you want somebody who is very impartial to ask you all the tough questions, like a coach, like Trisha or myself, to help you navigate toward whatever is next. I wish you all the best in terms of figuring out those next steps. And my friends, remember this, we build our mid-career GPS one mile or one step at a time, and how we show up matters. Make it a great rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the Mid-Career GPS Podcast. Make sure to follow on your favorite listening platform. And if you have a moment, I'd love to hear your comments on Apple Podcasts. Visit johnnarrow.com for more information about how I can help you build your mid-career GPS or how I can help you and your organization with your next workshop or public speaking event. And don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn and follow me on social at John Darrell Coaching. I look forward to being back with you next week. Until then, take care and remember how we show up matters.